back uh, in the last lecture we presented Bertrand Russell Whitehead's axiomatic system uh, that is what we find it in the book famous book Principia Mathematica. So, we started with uh, 5 axioms uh, and then before that we have an important uh, uh, it can serve as an important uh, kind of statement that is from any primitive uh, kind of uh, true proposition only true proposition implies. So, that means from tautologies you will generate only tautologies. So, now in this lecture what I would be doing is this that any formal axiomatic system that we come up with by using uh, some simple kind of uh, axioms etcetera and all. So, that axiomatic system I mean we should be in a position to derive at least some of the important laws of uh, logic that are uh, law of identity that is P implies P law of excluded middle P or not P or I mean uh, there is another law which is called as law of non contradiction it is not the case that both P and not P is the case. So, how do we derive all these valid formulas uh, that occurs in a given formal axiomatic system. So, now uh, for this one can start with uh, by selecting some kind of axioms. So, now we will be talking about uh, 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 the Russell Whitehead axiomatic system where it has only 5 axioms uh, to start with we have uh, these things. Suppose if anything which is a true proposition that implies only uh, a true proposition that means from true propositions you will not get contradictions. So, that is the first thing. So, that is already there. So, this is called as law of uh, the axiom related to tautology and second one is q implies p or q. So, this is called as addition and fourth one is of course, you can say third one it is p or q implies q or p this is a permutation either p or q is the case or q or p is the case which is called as permutation and the fifth one is law of association q or p or r. So, this is what is called as association law and then sixth one is summation q implies r is p p r q implies p r r. So, p r q implies p r r. So, now uh, to start with we have these uh, axioms and then we have some kind of uh, transformation rules if you apply this transformation rules on any one of these things it will retain its tautology hood. And the other important rule is is that if you have p and if you have p implies q where this implication is considered to be material implication then this p gets detached and then what you get is q. So, that is all we have to begin with and from this particular kind of thing you can derive all the valid formulas. So, all the valid formulas means all the true propositions in any given uh, formal axiomatic system there are different ways to check whether a given formula is valid or given formula is a tautology. So, two important methods that we have already discussed that is we can check it with semantic tableaux method or one can use a tooth table method and then we can find out whether a given formula is considered to be uh, valid uh, or that means tautology or not. So, now what uh, I will be doing is uh, I will be deriving some uh, theorems some important theorems in uh, these are theorems in any given axiomatic system. So, the first uh, theorem that I will be uh, deriving is this thing. So, once you write this thing in this way that means something is a theorem P implies Q implies P. So, this statement says that uh, something is true then the truth is obtained from any kind of proposition and all this is also called as famously put it uh, afterwards as paradox of material implication. It is considered to be a, a theorem in Russell Whitehead system or any any in any given axiomatic system it is considered to be a theorem. So, the only problem with this uh, theorem is this that if this proposition is true. So, that means uh, 
using the semantics of uh, implication P implies Q. So this is the way we define the material implication T, T, F and F alternative T and alternative F. So this is going to become false only in this case when P is T and Q is false in all other cases it becomes T. So now in that sense if the consequent this is the antecedent and this is the consequent if the consequent is true irrespective of whether the antecedent is true or false that means the antecedent part is this one whether or not the antecedent we need to consider only those cases in which you have true consequent that means these two cases now irrespective of whether P is T whether P is false so this is going to be uh, true only. So in that sense uh, a true proposition is implied by any kind of strange proposition that is even if this proposition is a true proposition or it is a nonsense or it is a false any kind of a true proposition should not be implied by any kind of strange kind of proposition that is not what we are discussing at this moment uh, when it uh, when these theorems apply to day to day discourse here are some of the problems which we will talk about it as a limitation of uh, this this particular kinds of axiomatic systems especially when it applies to uh, the day to day discourse but as far as analyzing the digital switching circuits are concerned as far as mathematical reasoning is concerned so these are the things which perfectly works all right. So now this is the one which we are trying to divide P implies Q implies P by using only these five axioms. So now one can use any one of these uh, axioms to begin with and then ultimately our journey begins with uh, these axioms all these axioms are absolutely true uh, the truth of uh, the proofs of these axioms cannot be questioned because already uh, they are self evident truths. So now somehow you need to use one of these axioms so that you will generate this particular kind of thing. So in a way what we are trying what we are essentially trying to do is we take up one particular kind of axiom we trim it in such a way so that you will get this P plus Q plus P as an outcome. So let us see let us take into consideration this particular kind of thing axiom 3 so that is P R Q so now definitely this is not in this particular kind of format somehow you need to manipulate this one that means you need to transform this particular kind of things which we already know that it is true the exam all exams are obviously considered to be true. So from the true proposition you need to get another true kind of proposition. So now if you can replace this thing uh, let us say Q uh, P wherever Q is there you replace it with P and wherever you have P you replace it with P. So these are the two substitutions which are uniformly making it in this particular kind of axiom 3. So you have to note that whatever substitutions you make in the given axiom if your substitution is uniform it is according to the transformation rule which we have discussed in the last class then its transformation is also corresponding to uh, a tautology. So that means what we are trying to do instead of Q we are putting P and wherever we have P we put it as not Q and then Q stands for so we put not Q so then this will become this not Q uh, wherever Q is there we are putting P so now what is that essentially what we have done here you replace Q with P and P with not Q so that is what you have written this is the justification for this particular kind of thing since the substitution is uniform if this is a tautology this is true any substitution which if it is done in a uniform manner should also be true the bracket needs to be closed here so this is the second step so now using the definition of material implication so that is a implies b uh, we have p skews here uh, that is not a or b so that means this not a or b is same as a implies b so now this is as it is p and then not q or p is nothing but q implies p so now uh, this is what we are supposed to prove each step each stage we write this particular kind of thing 
and if you want to be more specific you can write PM, PM stands for Principia Mathematica that particular kind of uh, axiomatic system. So now uh, since we got this thing as a theorem now you can substitute uniformly anything into it that will also become a theorem for example if you substitute um, uh, sorry, uh, not P for P wherever P is there you substitute it with not P and wherever uh, Q is there you substitute it with not Q so now this kind of preposition will become not P implies not Q implies not P if this is considered to be a theorem anything which uh, if we can substitute anything into it uniformly for P's we substituted not P for Q's we substituted not Q's then this is what is going to what you are going to get so this should also be a theorem if you are in doubt one can check it with uh, uh, either semantic tablox method or any particular kind of method so now let us try to check this particular kind of formula using simple tablox method so this is not Q or not P so now we have taken into consideration the negation of the formula and then we are constructing a tree so now this will become this thing not of not Q implies not P so now this will become uh, not Q not of not P is P so now you will see here clearly not P here and P here that is a contradiction the branch closes that means what we showed was simply this that negation of X is unsatisfiable so that means X has X is valid so in propositional logic validity tautology they are one of the same so that is why this formula has to be a true proposition and all the true propositions are also obviously considered to be theorems in the propositional logic so in that sense this is also considered to be a theorem of propositional logic if this is considered to be a paradox of material implication the one which I have written just now should also be considered as one of the instances of the paradox of material implication so when we discuss about paradox of material implication I will talk about these things in greater detail another instance of this one can be for example for P you just substitute not P and all so then this will become Q implies not P so there, there are thousands of instances like this so you keep P as it is instead of Q you substituted not Q and then you keep it as it is this should also become a theorem one of the beautiful things that you will see here is is that if something is a theorem something is a true proposition and it implies only true propositions so so tautologies will lead to tautologies so there is no way in which you begin with tautologies and then you will end up with contradictions that should not be the case and all so that is the reason why logicians will be continuously insisting on the tautologies rather than the contradictions if you begin with contradictions you can you will get any particular kind of proposition so that is the reason why we are not insisting on contradiction we are insist logicians will insist on only tautologies so now let us say you want to derive P implies P R uh, P so this is another kind of uh, theorem P implies P R P this is different from what we have here so this is an axiom P R P implies P but we are uh, we would like to derive P implies P R P so now again you can begin with uh, uh, the axiom 2 that is Q implies P R Q this is axiom 2 so now somehow you need to change this thing into this particular kind of format so now what substitutions you make into this particular kind of thing so that it will lead to this particular kind of thing which we require so what exactly we are trying to do in all these uh, theorems is, is that uh, we take this uh, things axioms as ideal kind of situations and then uh, these are all instances of this particular kind of axioms so now if you want to prove any one of these theorems and all so you begin with one of these axioms and apply transformation rules and you trim these axioms in such a way till uh, till such a way that uh, you will get whatever you desire so now this is the axiom which we began with uh, 
this is axiom number 2. So now this is not in this particular kind of format somehow you need to translate it, change it into this is a corresponding form that is for example if you substitute P for Q then this will become Q will become P and then P is as it is and Q is this one so now it is converted into P implies P R P with one substitution we got this particular kind of formula which is also considered to be a theorem so now in this way one can uh, one can prove all the valid formulas suppose whatever is considered to be a kind of uh, a true proposition or a tautology it should find a proof uh, in a given axiomatic system sometimes the proofs might be very lengthy or sometimes you might get a proof in uh, simple four or five steps so for instance let us try to prove uh, the particular thing uh, which we commonly know in logic that is law of identity so using one of these uh, axioms in particular so we will be proving this particular kind of thing how do we prove law of identity using uh, a given uh, kind of axioms so now uh, just now we proved this particular kind of thing so if you q implies p r q this is already a theorem substitute q for p then you will get p implies p r p how did you get this one you substituted p for q you get this particular kind of thing which is we already showed it in the last slide so now this is the first one to begin with now the second thing is this thing so we know that one of the axioms states that P R P implies P we know that this is obviously considered to be a theorem and all is an axiom so that is axiom number 2 it is tautology axiom of course you know if you are bored with this P's Q's etc and all you can view this P's, Q's, R's, etc. as some kind of propositions. Maybe in the uh, in the branch of in the field of arithmetic or any other kind of field, which you can think of, or you can simply treat this P's, Q's, etc. as some kind of uh, switching switches. In particular, simple switching in the simple switching circuits, this P's, Q's, R represents some kind of switches. That means if P is if I write just simply P, you can interpret it as uh, switches on or if I write not P usually it is written in this P bar that means switch is off when the, switch, when the switches are on for example uh, when both switches are uh, on and all the current passes through this particular kind of thing so there is uh, end gate uh, if it is in the in, if they are arranged in a parallel kind of connection it can be an R kind of gate you know. so all these things which we uh, we can visualize the same thing in the context of simple analysis of simple digital switching circuits so now coming back to our particular kind of thing so we are trying to show that law of identity will come as an outcome of these five axioms so now the first one which we have shown is this thing we substituted P for Q then you got P implies PRP so now we have this is the first step and the second step is this and the third step so we have a rule which says that the rule of syllogism which is obviously uh, is the case and all so if sub, suppose fx implies y and y implies z then x implies z in that sense so here it is p implies prp and prp implies p so that means simply p implies p then the justification for this one is 1 2 syllogism you will get this P implies P so it involves at least two or three steps to prove this particular kind of thing something is equivalent to itself you want to show it then this is what is the case this is law of identity so now for example in the case of the same thing in the context of natural deduction if you remember it when we discussed about this particular kind of method natural deduction we showed the same thing how to prove this thing 
using natural deduction. So this involves maybe one, um, maybe less than two steps. You know. So in this, you take the first one, antecedent of this one, as assumption or hypothesis. So now, what you will do here is this, this is, since this is already true, you reiterate this one. You reiterate the same proposition again, and then that means you got P again. So that means you draw a line like this, and then you say that. P in plus P is deduced. So in this natural deduction method, this will come as come in just two steps and all. But the same kind of thing uh, uh, for in Russell weighted axiomatic system, maybe it involves three or four steps, or maybe uh, in the other axiomatic system which we will be thinking of, uh, which will be studying, that is a Hilbert Ackermann axiomatic system. It might involve more than uh, five steps and all to prove. Simply P implies P, but here uh, what we have used is uh, just a principles, uh, natural principles of logic. That is, you used principle of reiteration. So you just reiterate the same thing, and then you draw a line like this, and then one and two, three, one and two conditional proof will get this P plus P. So what you will do here is is that. You will discharge your assumptions P and then you will talk about P implies P here using the conditional proof which is also called as rule of conditional proof. So, so far we deduced law of identity and now let us consider the law of excluded middle. So how to deduce the law of excluded middle. So law of excluded middle states that either the sentence either a proposition is P or it is not P, but not the other way around. Not P or P is not considered to be law of excluded middle, but P or not P is considered to be the law of excluded middle. So this holds in classical logics, but this may not hold in many other situations. When it comes to day-to-day -day discourse, examples related to day-to-day -day discourse, this may not hold. Simply, this is going to be applicable. In only those cases in which you can draw a clear boundary between x and not x. For example, you are talking about mortal and non mortal. It is easy to draw a line between whosoever is considered to be mortal, the living beings, and the dead beings. You can easily draw a line. In the same way, you can easily draw a line between black and white. So, it, everything is not in this particular kind of situation when it comes to day to day discourse. Um, you, you can very well have uh, both P true and not P is also true. Uh, this is also contested in the context of uh, intuitionistic, uh, uh, intuitionistic mathematicians like uh, Brouwer. Uh, he argues against this law of excluded middle. He is of the view that law of excluded middle need not be, uh, need not come as a theorem in a given logical system. So how it is a case? It is a case because suppose if you are uh, so Brouwer accepts P or not P only when you are able to deduce. Uh, um, you are able to prove either P or you are able to prove not P and all. Suppose if you are not able to prove both of them P and even not P and all then that can be questioned. So unprovability leads to uh, the fact that you need not have to uh, have this law of excluded middle as one of the theorems in your axiomatic system. So that is intuitionistic uh, logic and then in many deviant logics like fuzzy logics etc and all. We do not have this law of excluded middle as an outcome of it will not come as a byproduct in particular from using your axioms. That means you know you are talking about some kind of deviant logics. In the beginning of this classical propositional logic, we already we clearly stated that in all the classical logics, at least this law of identity, law of excluded middle, and law of non contradiction are necessarily one of the rules of one of the important. Uh, theorems in, in any given axiomatic system which follows classical logic. So forget about this thing let us try to show this uh, law of uh, excluded middle uh, using uh, the Russell weighted axiomatic system. So now uh, in the same way while proving this thing one can begin with uh, any one of these uh, axioms. So it is not uh, hard and fast that you know you begin with any one of these things but you have to use little bit of creativity while proving theorems also. So a proof is considered to be an effective proof 
only when it ends in finite steps in finite intervals of time suppose suppose if your proof involves some 150 steps and all and some other proof uh, uh, somebody else came up with uh, a simple proof where it involves only five or six steps then the second thing is considered to be a better proof than the first proof. So what constitutes an effective proof is the one uh, in which, 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 has, which, which has less length that is number of steps are less and it, it ends in finite intervals of time your proof should not go forever and ever. So now what is that we are trying to prove we are trying to prove this thing. So now take into consideration the fourth axiom P R Q implies Q R P. So, so now you somehow you need to transform this thing in such a way that uh, you will have only the letters P only because in, in our uh, final result that is P or not P only two uh, only one literal appears that is P that means you need to get away uh, this Q's and all. So now what you have done here is this thing somehow this Q needs to be eliminated and all so it has to be substituted with P so now what you will do here is this is uh, to begin with axiom 4 so now you substitute not P for P and then uh, not Q for Q so then this will this will become this is the first step and second step is this thing so this is the justification which we are trying to provide for this one uh, this will become not P R Q uh, so now this you will change it as uh, so what exactly you have done here is this at not P and for Q wherever Q is there you substituted with P so now this will become P R P uh, for P what we have substituted not P so that is what you have so now this transforms to by definition this goes to um, not P R P implies P R not P now somehow you have to use something so that this gets detached and you will get this thing as your outcome so now for that uh, you can take into consideration uh, this one uh, uh, PR uh, P not uh, one second so somehow you need to get away from this particular kind of thing uh, for example if you substitute uh, in this one uh, let us see how we do it and all in this one so earlier we proved not P R so earlier we have proved this particular kind of thing so just now we have proved this particular kind of statement so this is uh, identity so that is written as ID so this is the uh, third step so now by definition P plus P can be written as not P R P by definition so what is the definition definition of material implication so now P not P R P is the one which has come as an outcome so now here you should note that so till here it is fine and all but in order to prove this thing uh, P plus P all the steps which are there in P plus P has to be there before that since we already proved it so we are just straight away inserting that particular kind of thing in this proof there are many proofs which you already proved so that can serve as the starting point for proving other kinds of theorems so in that sense uh, this since this is we already proved that this is to be uh, this, this is true as a theorem so from this by definition it you will get this one so now somehow you need to detach this particular kind of antecedent so now observe this two things not P or P here not P or P here so these two that means 2 and 4 modus ponens are rule of detachment you can use 
So, this is what you got P R not P. So, how did we get this P R not P? So, we started with uh, axiom number 4, one can start with any one of these axioms, but ultimately it will be very simpler if you can start with this particular kind of thing. So, what exactly we have done here? The strategy is, is that the last step of your uh, this thing. So, this will come as this particular kind of thing. Somehow, you need to transform this thing uh, into this particular kind of format. So, that is what we have here, and rest of the things what we are trying to do here is, is that we are trying to detach whatever is there in the antecedent point then you will get this particular kind of thing. So how did we get this one using rule of transformation or modus ponens etc. Modus ponens plays an important role here. So, so there are two things which are important in the quotation that we have seen in the uh, last class the thing which is central to this derivation is the material implication and not only the material implication but also uh, this particular kind of rule of detachment that is if you have P and if you have P plus Q then you will get Q. So this is the way of showing uh, P R P uh, as a theorem in Principia Mathematica and that means you used the Russell Whitehead axioms and then you have deduced this law of excluded mid. So in the same way one can show whether or not uh, law of non-contradiction is uh, holds uh, or not. So now uh, there is a fam important thing uh, that is uh, uh, law of double negation. Let us try to show whether uh, I mean uh, how we can prove this double negation kind of thing. this P implies not not P and not not P implies P is considered to be the rule of uh, double negation. So now uh, since we got uh, this uh, P R not P uh, that is law of uh, excluded middle. So now from that uh, P R P implies not not P you will get it as an outcome. So this is what you have already uh, shown to be uh, true that is P R not P just now we proved this particular kind of thing P R not P. So what is that we are trying to prove P implies not not P. So now this is already a theorem which we have shown just now. So now what you do here is this is to begin with uh, this is a theorem just now we have proved. So now substitute not P for P so that is if you substitute wherever P is there you substitute it with not P. So now this will become not P this will become not not P. So now this by definition suppose if you view it as P as X and this whole thing as Y so then this is in the form not X or Y. So this is same as by definition X implies Y. So now what is X here for us this is not sorry P and Y is not not so that means uh, what you got here is in the third step this by definition leads to uh, P implies this is by definition is same as P implies not not P. But that is not what we want to get in all but we want to prove the double negation uh, double negation rule that is not not P implies So one will be tempted to say that if x implies y and y implies x and all that is not the case here. So x implies y and y implies x are totally different things. So now this is what we have already proved shown to be the case. So now we are trying to show this particular kind of thing not not p implies p. We will make use of this particular kind of thing little bit later. So, so now let us try to prove this particular kind of thing. What we are trying to prove, we are trying to prove not not p implies p. So now one needs to start with any one of these axioms and all. So now somehow, if you can use this particular kind of axiom, and then somehow you replace this in such a way that so this will be like uh, somehow if you substitute uh, not not 
P and then if you substitute R for P and all and R for not P R for P itself then this is what you get not not P implies P. So with this uh, somehow we will get some kind of clue of what to substitute for P and what to substitute for R in this whole formula so that the, the last uh, this consequent of this conditional will have this particular kind of format and rest of the things what you will be doing is you will be trying to detach whatever is there before that by using rule of syllogism or uh, uh, modus ponens or maybe two other transformations etc. So that is what uh, we will be uh, doing here so now you take into consideration the first step Q implies R so that, that is what we have taken into consideration P implies Q implies P R so this is what axiom number uh, 6 or summation axiom but you need to note that this summation axiom later it was shown to be the case that it is no longer uh, an axiom in Russell Whitehead axiomatic system because this will come as an outcome of one of these axioms and all. So it loses its axiomatic, it lost its axiomatic status. But at this moment, uh, Russell and Whitehead, in their book Principia Mathematica, proves uh, by considering this also. This is also an ax, an axiom. But later, Paul Bernays, student of uh, Russell Whitehead, I think uh, he showed that this is no, no longer uh, an axiom. An axiom is a one which is considered to be a self-evident truth, which doesn't require any proof. So now you start with uh, this particular kind of thing so now you substitute not P for uh, for Q and not not P for R so why you have substituted this thing uh, uh, because somehow you need to generate this particular kind of thing uh, so now this will become uh, so wherever Q is there you have not P here so now this will become not P R is this thing not of not of not P three knots are there and then P and now P R Q P means uh, as it is Q for Q we have substituted not P implies P R R so we have substituted not P for R uh, sorry uh, so this is uh, same as P and R for R you have substituted not of not P so this is what uh, uh, you will get from this one so now uh, we have already uh, proved this particular kind of thing so this is what you have already uh, we have shown that P in place not not P that is what we are using here theorem proved earlier just now we have shown that this is the case so how did you get this one your P R not P and you substitute not P into this one then this will become not not P so then this is same as P in place not not P so in that way you proved this particular kind of thing so you make use of this particular kind of thing so now you substitute not P into this one not P for P in 3 so now this you will get not of not of P so now observe this 2 and 4 not P plus not 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 P and this is same as this one so now these two modus ponens you will get whatever is remained here this gets detached and then you will get this thing P R not P implies P R not not So this is considered to be the fifth step till now we did not get to this particular kind of thing. So now how did we get this one 2 and 4 modus points 2 is what this one this portion and this portion is same so that is why this gets detached it is like uh, x and x implies y so you will get y. So this is the fifth step till now we could not trim this one in such a way that it it is translated into this particular kind of thing so now we showed that P 
P or not P is the case. This is the theorem which we have proved law of excluded middle. So there are so many things which we are embedding into this particular kind of theorem and all. Uh, in prove, while proving this particular kind of thing we made use of all the things which you have already shown to be true earlier that means shown to be theorems earlier. So now this is what is the case now so this is theorem number 8 uh, now so why we are using these things because somehow we need to detach this thing we have to get to the last one which is there in the consequent is occupies the consequent of your condition so now these two 5 and 6 modus ponens you will get this thing p r not not p so that is what you get so now till now this didn't uh, is not at over so now in the eighth step we use axiom number uh, 4 that is p r q implies q r so now somehow this should be in this particular kind of format so that it gets detached so that means for q you need to substitute this not 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 p so now this uh, with the transformation uh, you will get p r now q is so now you need to write like q is nothing but not not p so now this uh, you will get not not three nots p implies q is this thing not 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 p or p so now observe this 8 and 9 uh, sorry uh, 7 and 9 this is what I am uh, writing it here so now the tenth step is here uh, from 7 and 9 modus ponens because this p or not 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 p is same as this one p r not 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 p so these two gets detached and then this is what you get not 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 p or p implies p so now till now we did not get what we wanted what we wanted is this thing not not p implies p so this is what we are trying to get so now this by definition suppose if you view it as uh, this thing the whole thing as x and whole thing, this thing as y so this is in this form not x uh, sorry so just a minute so not not uh, not p or sorry r p so it is not uh, implication so this is r p so this is like uh, not x or y so that means it is same as by definition x implies y what is x here not not p and what is y here is p u. so that is what you get by your definition so now in the 11th step so this by definition 10 by definition you will get not not p implies p so now what is that we have achieved in this particular kind of thing we showed that uh, for example if you want to show that uh, it is not the case that it is not the case that this is duster means that it is a duster <laughs> so that is what you two times you negated that one double negation leads to the same thing so now why this uh, proof is considered to be uh, sometimes it makes very silly to talk about proofs like p implies p or p or not p etc and all but one thing one should note and all here in all these proofs uh, our proofs are considered to be very rigorous uh, in a sense that uh, we started with the axioms which are considered to be obviously true and then transformation rules which preserves the truth and then the rule of detachment so that is also considered to be uh, truth preserving kind of rules and everything is stated explicitly on the board and all from that you got this not not p implies p there is no uh, there is no step in this proof um, uh, which can be that can be questioned and all just like in the case of uh, uh, proof of uh, 2 is equal to 1 in the, in the so one of the funniest proofs that we have seen in the last uh, class uh, we we clearly we have seen that after following some 6 or 7 steps in the 8th step 
there was some problem and all that is cancellation of a square minus a b both sides and all that means 0 by 0 is not permitted in that particular kind of proof that means the proof is considered to be was considered to be defective in that case so you cannot move further because that step is wrong so but here in this case each step is uh, we are making our journey in such a way that we started with the truths and the next step is also going to be true and then we are moving to we are closing moving closer to whatever we wanted to derive in this case we showed that not not p implies p by following some kind of rigorous kind of method that is so will be rigorous method is used employed here why because everything is stated explicitly and from that you have derived this not not p implies p so finally we one can also derive some of the important other theorems and all like one of the important theorems that you employ in classical logic is law of contraposition that is if p implies q is the case then not q implies not p is the case so how do we get this law of non contraposition uh, law of contraposition within this Russell whited axiomatic system so for that also you begin with uh, some axioms that means they are obvious truths and all then you trim those axioms in such a way and then by using transformation rules and rule of uh, uh, modus ponens rule and then you will generate so you will generate uh, law of contra position so again the axioms remains the same so what essentially we are trying to prove is this thing so from p implies q you can prove not q implies not p since it is a theorem you write it in this way so since it is a theorem in Principia Mathematica you write it as PM or even Russell Whitehead RW also one can write. So now again we start with the, the summation axiom so that is the one which you stated here clearly uh, implies P plus R. Now in this, uh, in this particular kind of thing somehow we need to generate this thing suppose if you can substitute P for not P you will get P implies Q and if you substitute for P for R you substitute something else maybe you might, you might get something closer to this one if not the same formula. So now what substitutions one can make is like this so you substitute not not Q for R so now this you will get this thing if you substitute uh, not not q for r so you will get not not q uh, so p r q is and uh, and what else uh, one can substitute uh, here is this uh, not p for p these are the three two things which you are substituting here so wherever p is there you are substituting with not p and wherever r is there you are substituting it with uh, uh, wherever r is there not not q so this will become not p r q implies p means not p or r means not not q so why we have done this thing uh, because somehow we transform this thing as much as possible closer to our destination our destination is this one so now uh, 3 uh, we already sh uh, so now we write this one first of all q implies not not q uh, so this by definition is same as p implies q so this is the reason why we have transformed this thing into this particular kind of format and now this is nothing but p implies not not So this is what is the case. So now we already showed that P implies not not P, but it's same as Q implies not not Q. So this is what is called as ID means law of identity. So now these three and four modus ponens you will get this particular kind of thing. So this two gets detached, and you will get this one. P implies Q implies P implies not not. So 
so now uh, till till now it's not transformed completely into this one we have to trim it a little bit more so that you know this this will become not q implies not p so for that what you will do is we will be making use of another axiom so each step is considered to be a, a kind of truth and all either you have to use axiom or you have to use a theorem which you have showed earlier or it should be it should come as an outcome of some kind of transformation rule that means with the uniform substitution you should get this particular kind of thing so now we have p implies q implies q r p so this is what we already have here axiom number 3 somehow this you need to transform this axiom in this way so now in this axiom suppose if you substitute not p for p and not not q for q so this is what you have done here so now this gets transformed to p will become not p or q means not not q implies q for q you have substituted not not q and for p you have substituted not p so now this by definition you will get p implies not not q and this is same as uh, not q implies not p so now so this is what we have so now p implies not not q implies not q or not p so 6 and 8 p implies p implies q means uh, one second so now observe this particular kind of thing 5 and 8 p uh, p implies q implies p implies not not q the same p implies not not q implies not q implies not p this is like x implies y which is there in the step number 5 and y implies z in step number 8 if you find a similar kind of thing like this then you can infer x implies z by using property called as syllogism now we can again once again see here uh, p implies not not q where is this 5 uh, p implies not not q is this one uh, sorry p implies q is this one and p implies not not q is this one that means p implies q should go to this one 9 p implies q implies not q implies not p so this is what we are trying to get so that means uh, in some kind of 9 steps we got whatever we wanted to uh, prove so in this way one can derive many theorems uh, whatever you consider to be a kind of valid formula or a tautology I mean that should find a proof in this Principia Arithmetica system so in the next class what we will be doing is uh, whether all the valid formulas finds a proof or not so there are three important properties that we should talk about now the question the immediate question that comes to our mind is is that is this system consistent consistent in the sense that um, suppose if you derive both x and not x from within the given axiomatic system that means the system is considered to be inconsistent in that sense Principia Mathematica is considered to be consistent and another another important property is, is that all the uh, provable uh, uh, things that you are uh, you the just now proved have have to be true that means it has to uh, support the property of soundness all the provable theorems are true and in the same way the other way around if all the valid formulas are also uh, also find a proof and all then your system is going to be complete so we are going to say in the next class that uh, the Principia Mathematica uh, the system that which, are, which was introduced by West Bertrand Russell and Whitehead in that many valid formulas can be derived and all all these things corresponds to some kind of uh, uh, statements in arithmetic so it is in that sense all the statements of uh, arithmetic are translated into 
one of these uh, axioms and all and then these axioms can further be transformed into a corresponding theorems and all that also corresponds to some of the statements in arithmetic. So in this class what essentially we have seen is, is that we have started with uh, Bett and Russell whited axiomatic systems axiomatic system where it has only disjunction and negation although in the axioms you have implication sign here but actually uh, it should be read as uh, actual things should have only disjunction and negation and from that using transformation rules and uh, the rule of uh, detachment we derived many theorems. So in the next class we are going to see whether Principia Mathematica is considered to be consistent or is complete sound all these important properties which we will discuss it in the next class.